Hi there. So, this is just a quick um, note about um, why it is that certain things can't be replaced. Although it may seem like everything that I I'm not a rich man, obviously. I know, but you know it may seem like you know why why am I perhaps being so protective about things that I have? There's a couple of reasons why I'm being protective about things that I have. There's certain things that I have, that I own, that can't be found pretty much anywhere else. One of these things is this thing here. It's a, it's, it's a very classic computer that was developed um, as part of a, basically it's a, it's a calculator kind of a computer. You got um, you got like a like a, a qwerty keyboard down there, and you got an LCD kind of display, and you can write stuff there, and backspace and all that. This is this um okay. Let's see, let's start. That's a clear key there. It, this gives you like a keyboard and everything, and with it you you can write stuff like that. Um, for example, let's do that's got a menu key. Basically, it's like a very clever computer that does some, some very clever stuff. That's the program in C. You see, it does the language in C. That's why it's kind of a rare computer. It's not a usual kind of... This is like a, a, a later version of a much earlier computer calculator that was developed by Sharp and Casio. They just did very simple programs that people could use to write fun programs on. This is um, a far later version of basically that same thing. Um, the earlier one was just a simple one that did simple, like I say, things. But this one it wasn't just a simple, basic kind of language called BASIC, actually. And it wasn't that. It was my, This one was about 10 editions later on. And there was another, uh, another about 8 of them. There was the first one, PB100. There was a, a FX730P, which was similar to this. But the first one had a 12 character LCD display and it had 12 character position so each one of these N U M P R I N yeah, would be, they would have 12 of that and that was it and it had like a little keyboard like that and a little numerical thing like that and it, nothing like this it was like the simple one but it still it let you have and oh yeah and it had a couple of digits or number of steps available to program in and whether it was in writing or reading mode writing or running mode because it changed it whether uh, uh, don't know, and in that little talk out this space you could actually write some simple basic computer programs so it really could be called personal computer and it, you could put numbers and conditions and steps and write out things and take get information like for example number what is the value you could say what is blah 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 what is the value of variable x was so you could put formulas in there and you could put tangent like you know if you wanted to calculate angles or you could put how much how much did you spend like if you were doing a calculator for debt repayments that kind of thing there was a simple thing in the manual to show you a debt, debt recalculating thing and it would show you what how many payments that kind of thing and then the basic program work it out how to do it and it would show the result at the end of it and it could even have like a you could get a, a printer for it attachment so that you could write it out in a little teal roll kind of a format the, the result in, in a printed kind of a way as well you could add to it but that was like a really simple one it had like I say 12 characters and then later versions of this the FX 730p I, I owned that as well this is the, the um, PB100 the first one the FX 730p had 16 characters so it had one, two, three, blah, blah, sixteen, and that let you see a bit more of a screen. But other than that, it wasn't. Um, actually, no, it wasn't. It was twenty-four. I beg your pardon. It was twenty-four characters. So it was like a massive improvement, double the number of characters of the other one. So you could actually see like quite a lot of a basic program in the in your screen going on. And in fact, I can probably show you this here on YouTube quickly. Just wait for my browser to pick up. It's loading the browser. It's two seconds. Nearly there. Okay, it's already there. This is it. Okay. 
in YouTube, this is it. This computer here is the one I'm talking about. Casio 7. I own this one here. Let's put it on full screen. All right. You see, that's what I was talking about. It's a similar to kind of thing. It's got a 24 character LCD display and it's got a similar kind of a keyboard and that's one of the lines of a basic program that he's wrote, this guy. And you can see he's got the same kind of number of keyboard and it's got steps there um, and you can see the little things I was talking about. It's got, it's got little um, things for telling you whether it's writing or not. And you can't see what it says on the screen but it tells you whether it's writing or not or running. It's the same kind of thing but it is very useful and uh, the similar kind of thing. That, that, that's programming that's going on there. So you get the idea basically. That's 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 kind of what I did. And this is the second one I owned, but I gave this to my mum actually because I eventually got a better one than this one. So I gave donated this one to my mum because she found it quite useful. She kept her numbers and addresses on it. I, I moved all my mum's numbers the contact numbers onto this the memory that it had, which was about eight K or something like that. There's nothing. But it was enough to hold enough like hundred telephone numbers or something like that. And I moved it and gave it to her and she used it and she loved it, it was really a lot. So it was useful, it was a useful thing. I really did a good job and she used it. And then I, I, when I did that, it was around the time when I was about 17, I moved on to something else called an Air FX, I believe 850. Uh, let me just see if I can get that in there. So. Casio FX850, this one. Images, okay, this is the image one. That's the one I got to, I got later on. This, as you can see, is very much the same kind of thing, but two whole lines. So it had two whole lines. You can see there it's got like a program. Maybe it's just the images. So a massive two characters to use to write programs on. That was like a, a world of dreams for me coming true. And then eventually I, I got into other computers, big computers, so I got bored of that. And then I got onto, eventually I came back to this one because I thought this was clever. So I came back to this one, DB1000, which was shopping. this gun here. This thing here, which was a similar one to this one that I'm just showing here. But this computer, let's see if I can get a better image, had a better. Had a, well, it had a better, but it wasn't very good. It had like a four-line display, but the keyboard wasn't all that great. The display wasn't all that clear. So it was kind of like this one. Same kind of thing as this, as this. but it had, uh, obviously, you know, you get the idea, basically. But the only problem with this is that this, the display is quite nice and crisp. That's just gone off. But on this, the display was always very blurry. So even though it was supposedly a much better oven, I thought, and not only that, but it was not just characters, but you could actually draw the single dots on the screen as well, so you could do proper graphics on it. So really get carried away in it. But not only that, but, uh, you know, yeah, it graphical. It wasn't just bigger, but it was graphical as well, and it had 32 across. So it seemed like much better when I bought it, and I paid quite a lot of money for it, nearly enough 200 quid, but it didn't actually turn out to be very good, so I was a bit of a disappointment in my early teenage years. I thought I was really, I was coming back to it from my bigger computers back to this because there were bigger computers available and I was thinking that this was going to be something good but it actually turned out to be a bit crap and the ones that I had earlier seemed to be much clearer like that Hictex 730p the one I owned before that if I can just go back on the browser but oh, one more time that had like a ten times clearer display and even from here, even with a bad light, you can see it 10 times clear and it's, it's a 24 character, so it's 32 characters across it. It's not graphical, so each of these can only be one character at a time you can draw to it. So you can't do any games or anything like that. But, um, so I thought that this next one, but, you know, by then uh, it, all new computers have started to come out. So, but by then I came back to this one, but by then... No, I was thinking that this would have got a lot better, but it wasn't, so I was a bit disappointed. But only now, like when I'm 41, do I finally get something which was like the original thing I bought, the PB1000, but this. So this is why it's so valuable to me, because it's really like a whole evolution. And with a proper display and a proper language, it's better than, well, I mean, it's better than that language. And it's very useful, powerful. Anyway, I just thought I'd share that with you. This is the reason why, basically... 
there are things here that you can't generally get this. I've got this specially on eBay and it's not something you can generally buy anyway so if somebody was to take stuff away from me I'll, you know perhaps I'm not and able to prove I'm here a tenant or whatever there's I haven't got like you know the proof that I'm you know somebody owed money from before that lived here and they took something like this away it's a chance I wouldn't get it back so that's why I'm really kind of it's kind of my whole life you see is that all this stuff values is valid to me and I could lose it forever so it would defeat the whole kind of point of my life in a way I've spent all my life trying to get it kind of thing anyway I just thought I'd share that with you thank you very much